A few days ago, I posted a video asking whether or not women should be allowed to vote. Today, I want to answer that question for you definitively and give you my reasons. Before I get into it, let's tackle the issue of misogyny. Is it misogyny to ask whether or not women should vote? Does it mean that I hate women? Does it mean that anyone who questions whether women should vote hates women? Well, no. No, it doesn't. We don't think 17-year-olds should vote either, and that's not because we hate 17-year-olds. It's not even because we think that passing the Rubicon of your 18th birthday somehow bestows you with a magical level of intelligence and maturity that you didn't have when you were 17. That's not why 17-year-olds can't vote. The voting age is the same as the draft age. That's why 18-year-olds can vote, because they can be drafted. And if it's your blood that's going to answer for leadership choices, you have a right to determine who those leaders are. So asking if women can vote, no, it's not misogyny. It's a legitimate, provocative, interesting question. My answer, no, women should not vote. I'll give you three reasons. First of all, let's start with the biggest one, the draft. 18 year olds can vote because 18 year olds can be drafted. Well, 18 year old men only. The military has recently thrown all combat positions open to women and that was the reason that women weren't subject to the draft. Selective service, the draft, is intended to fill combat roles specifically. Selective service gives the military the bodies it needs to load on landing crafts, to land them at Omaha, to land them at Utah, to send them to the Chosin Reservoir, to send them down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It's for combat positions. Because women couldn't take combat positions in the army, there was no point drafting them. Now, a lot of commenters at my blog and on the other video um, said something along the lines of, well, there's lots of non-combat positions that you could draft women into. Like, there's no reason that women need to be in combat. Well, when it comes to the vote, yes, there is. If women are drafted into non-combat positions, then nothing has changed. It's still not their blood that's being spilled. If it's not you that's on the line, you don't get a say. Now, let's just assume that um, women are drafted for combat positions. Let's assume the whole non-combat thing is a non-starter. We are going to draft women into combat positions. Well, you can't. It's a paradox. As long as women can vote, they're never going to vote for themselves to be placed in harm's way. If a situation arises where the draft could be initiated, the first thing that women are going to do is start voting for exemptions for themselves. Pregnant women will be first. Women will vote to exempt pregnant women. They will then vote to exempt nursing mothers. They'll vote to exempt mothers of multiple children, mothers of children under a certain age, single mothers. They'll vote until the exemption basically exempts every woman from combat. So legally, technically, on paper, women will be subjected to the draft, into combat roles, in effect, they will vote for exemptions to moot that. Now, a lot of competitors said, hey, you could just have requirements like, oh, they have to have implantable birth control devices or after a certain amount of time has passed, you get deployed anyway. Women won't vote for those. You can't pass any of those attempts to create a more fair draft. Women won't vote for them. It's the paradox of women voting and having the vote linked to the draft. Women won't vote to draft themselves, they'll make sure that they're completely exempt. So we're right back where we started. It's not women's blood. It's not women's bodies. They don't get a say. They don't get to decide that other people should go and die. My second reason why women shouldn't vote, spending. Okay, I'm referring to um, this paper, very interesting. Did women's suffrage change the size and scope of the government? 
I'll put a link to this paper in the lower bar so you can look at it yourself. This is the chart that I find most interesting. Okay, the line down the middle is women's suffrage. This is government expenditures. You can see what happens to them as soon as women vote. Now, a lot of researchers said, well, perhaps we're looking at a case of spurious correlation, that something else happened that caused government expenditures to explode at the exact same time as suffrage. There's a number of different theories. There's a theory about um, unbalanced spending. I think this is Beaumont. Beaumont's theory of unbalanced spending, that wage increases will always exceed productivity gains. You're always gonna play catch up. This causes the cost of any goods or service to go up. Okay, fine. There's other theories that talk about how people just started to recognize that government services were a social good. Some other theories talk about ratcheting effects. There's other theories that talk about um, the fact that politicians are becoming more entrepreneurial. They're treating this more as a business and they're arguing for increases in, in their own salaries and the cost of administration, all of those things. Lots of different theories. They fall apart though when you realize that government spending, look here, government spending has not always been growing. If this is a matter of wages always exceeding productivity, then how do you explain the four-year decline right after World War I in government expenditures? 1920 hits and bam, the expenditures take off. It takes four years for women to vote to reach previous peak levels of spending. It takes them 11 years to double per capita government expenditures. What are they spending the money on? Oh, well, that's pretty interesting. First two big initiatives following suffrage. Number one, alimony, divorce and alimony laws. Women voted for alimony laws that applied only to women and they voted for alimony to be in effect for life. Meaning any man who legally married a woman was legally required to support her for the rest of her life, no matter what the circumstances of marital breakdown. So the second thing women voted for, prohibition. It's kind of almost a joke, isn't it? You give women some power, the first two things they do is take away a guy's money and then they take his beer. It's also a historical fact. That is what women voted for. It's what women continue to vote for. Women believe themselves to be social arbiters of what constitutes good manners and civil society. Women believe themselves entitled to men's money and they'll vote to continue to take it. They vote to fleece men is sort of the rude way to put it. It's true though, that is what they vote for. We are now facing a presidential candidate who is seriously contemplating making tuition free. It's always that nice word, eh? How many things do women want for free? They want free healthcare, they want free tuition, they want free birth control, they want free abortions, they want free tampons. These things aren't free. Someone pays for them. That's men. Men pay for those things. Men contribute far more to tax revenues than women do. Eventually, we're gonna run out of money. The money won't be there anymore. Now, recall that women can't be drafted. Where do you think women will vote to get the money they need for the services they care about? Do you think they're gonna strip the Department of Education? Are they going to strip social services? Are they gonna strip healthcare? No. They're gonna strip the Department of Defense. They're gonna take money out of the military all the while insisting that men meet their obligations to be drafted. They'll gut the military while relieving men of none of the responsibility of providing the nation with security. This actually happened in Switzerland. Switzerland put to a public vote or a parliamentary vote whether or not the Department of Defense should be defunded and women almost voted that through. They called the Department of Defense toys for boys. This is what happens when you let women vote. They consume resources at nothing even approaching the rates at which they contribute 
to those resources. They consume men's money rapaciously. There's no end in sight. And when the money runs out, they're going to strip it out of the military because the draft doesn't and cannot apply to them. That's my second reason women shouldn't vote. My third reason, immigration. <clears throat> women have this overwhelming need to be seen as nice. They want to be nice people. They want people to like them. They want the world to be a friendly, huggy place with cupcakes and unicorns and everyone who loves each other. And that's wonderful for family life. That's an absolute disaster for national governance. You can see the fallout from women wanting to be nice in Europe right now. There's a demographic time bomb ticking in Europe. You have ethnic Europeans refusing to have children, not even close to a replacement birth rate, welcoming in radical religious-based immigrants with birth rates that are four, five, six. It's done in Europe, except it can't be done. The European nuclear arsenal cannot be turned over to radical Islam. That is a death sentence for the world. It can't happen. Now, recall that women can't be drafted. They will not vote for that. Who's going to deal with the issues on the ground in Europe? Who will be the people who have to armor up and go and deal with this problem nice women have created? It's going to be men. Women aren't going to vote for themselves to be made responsible for this. They will not vote for themselves to be held responsible for the problem they created. It always comes back to that first issue, to the draft, to blood consequences. It would be lovely to live in a world where people didn't go to war, people didn't fight, people didn't try to kill each other for ridiculous reasons. But we don't get to live in the world that we like, the world that we imagine. We have to live in the world that exists. The world that exists is filled with dangers, lots of them. Dangers that women are inviting onto our own soil, all the while demanding more and more and more and more free stuff for themselves. This chart of government spending, it doesn't decline. We're only talking 20 years after suffrage here. This chart continues to just go up and explode. That's the world women have voted for. Women have had to vote for 100 years. Effectively, what they voted for is to destroy the great liberal civilizations that men built for us. We can't allow that to happen. We can't afford that. Saying that women shouldn't vote, it isn't misogyny. It's self-defense. Women, no women should vote.